morning, Atlantis Mirror. That keyboard selection was played for you by the commander's birthday girl, Jenny Weatherby. She must have inherited, inherited her talent from her mother's side. We concur, and uh, Jim, if you wouldn't mind, we'd like to leave the OCAC off for about another 30 minutes. Okay, no problem. Uh, Director T is off, and OCAC off also for another 30 minutes. Uh, Roger, and we've got uh, TV there on the aft flight deck. And, Scott, to let you know, we uh, do have TV on the uh, air flight deck. Welcome aboard. And, Scott, a couple of things. Uh, we are anticipating the PAO, PAO event uh, to be televised from the uh, core module, and it will be on air to ground two. Copy all. Hey, Wolf, you're looking very comfy up there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's great to see you. Um, Dave Wolf, this question uh, just came to me from your mother. She says she's not, uh, she's not convinced you're going to be able to uh, celebrate the Jewish holidays correctly. Um, are you going to be able to do that? Did you bring what you need to do that? I've got what I need coming up on the progress in December. Uh, a friend of mine has sent it, so... I'll be able to celebrate, and even without the items, we can do it in mind. All right, that's great. Uh, well, let me start then with, uh, with Michael Fole. Mike, we have heard from other astronauts who have lived on the Mir that there have been various physical and mental effects that occur to your body and to your mind uh, when the level of carbon dioxide aboard Mir gets, uh, gets higher than you would like. Have you noticed any physical degradation at any time during your mission or any uh, mental uh, haziness or, or any mental problems at all uh, while you've been on Mir? Uh, the answer to that is no. And um, uh, as far as carbon dioxide goes on Space Station Mir, I have not had any, I've noticed it almost every day uh, while I have been tending my plants that I've been growing in the greenhouse. I'm aware of the level as, uh, as far as the uh, detectors are measuring it, and uh, it has always been fairly low, well within the limits that have been set for um, the space station mere habitability. So I'm not quite sure uh, how that r report arose. Um, occasionally, the carbon dioxide goes higher when we have had to use um, a different carbon dioxide scrubbing system, but it has always been within the limits prescribed for the space station. No kidding. I've, uh, I've seen your family. They are delightful, and they are looking forward to seeing you when you get back. If you will, pass the baton over to Dave Wolf. Dave, you trained, I, I think, for just about everything before you traveled to Mir. Have you been surprised by anything since you've been there? Uh, I was, when I first walked in, this place looked like one of those radio shops in New York City. There's so much gear everywhere. And it's just a playground of equipment and cameras and recorders. So uh, I'm surprised how much can actually be here. It's a very alive, living place. Yeah, Jim, hold on to the mic for a minute. I'd like you, if you will, to preview tomorrow's spacewalk for us. What's going to happen? What's the, uh, the best that can happen out of that spacewalk? Well, what they intend to do is to recover 
some experiments that were deployed on Mission STS-76, I think. They are experiments that have been looking at the environment of space, a very harsh environment with cosmic rays and uh, particles impacting different surfaces. They will bring those experiments back, and we will an analyze them down on the ground. It's similar to what we learned on the Long Duration Exposure Facility satellite several years ago. They also will deploy uh, some Russian hardware that was sent up uh, with us. They'll take it to the outside of the station that will help uh, Anatoly and, and his uh, folks to attempt to fix the leak on Spectre. And, and if that's successful, then they can recover the capabilities uh, in there. It's well, One thing that we learned, uh, our agency, from the Russians is to be flexible. The hardware was sent to us uh, only a couple of weeks before launch, and I was very happy that we were able to incorporate it into the flight and bring the hardware up here. And we brought lots of different kinds of Russian hardware just in case that doesn't fix the problem, some of the other equipment that the Russians have sent may help to fix the problem. The first question to you. We know what type of discussions there were regarding the Mir station on the Earth and the joint mission. What was your assessment of the condition of the Mir station and the complications associated with uh, the general condition of it? Could you please give us your opinion? And this is to the Mir crew, the Russian members. I think it is a good question, and we return to it often. I think that the best decision was made to continue the expedition first, and not only just using Russian resources, but also to enlist the NASA specialists in this effort. We, in our next mission, have David Wolf, who will be performing the science program set forth by NASA. And of course, we will have a great deal of work to perform in uh, re recovering uh, portions of the station. Of course, we cannot absolutely uh, sharply uh, re resolve uh, operation and repair questions and the science program because who can ever who had ev who has ever operated such a station over such a period of time it has been 12 years uh, that we have been uh, an exploiting uh, engineering work by people in space this is also a test and if we were to throw this over on half uh, halfway then it would be just wouldn't make sense and I think uh, this is very well understood both uh, in here and in Russia so that is why Atlantis is next to us right now and why the NASA crew is working together with us and we are all hoping that we will obtain good results from it all. I can add to the ads of my commander that undoubtedly the condition of the station is a lot better than it was one and a half, two months ago when we have almost brought it, we brought it to a very high uh, reliability of onboard systems. We also have a great deal of margin for uh, our onboard systems. They are operating stably and reliably, and the decision that was made was absolutely correct to continue the expedition and the flight. My gratitude to all those who fought for this decision a great thank you to the commander, to Mr. Weatherby, that is here. We're happy to he see them and all subsequent shuttles that are planned. I would like to compliment the Russian uh, space agency and the space community for its resourcefulness. First of all, this is a very beautiful space station, which I had the pleasure of seeing a couple of years ago when we flew close by. I'm very happy to be on board the beautiful space station Mir. It's incredibly resourceful inside. There are many ways to fix things. There are many ways to do scientific experiments. I am very impressed with the equipment that the Russians sent to us to bring up to the space station to help to fix uh, the leak. We still don't know where the leak is, and so they sent 
equipment of various different kinds in order to find the leak and help to stop the leak. And I was very impressed with the quickness and the resourcefulness that they used to send those materials, the various different kinds of materials, over to us to launch just before we came up to the, to the space station, which I'm very impressed with, and I'm glad I'm here. I would like to ask a question to Dave Wolf. First of all, his impressions of the station. He has, uh, has already uh, acquired some experience and has exchanged some opinions with Michael Fall. His first impressions. How does he feel on the station? Uh, how? This is a question for Dave Wolf. What is your first impression of the first days on the station? And we believe that you completely hand over with Mike Fall. And uh, please tell about your first impression on the station. Uh, very positive. I feel myself very uh, positive. This is a wonderful station, a wonderful crew, Pavel and Anatoly, and uh, there's no feeling. Of, it's a very, I feel very secure, and I feel uh, very good. I feel better. And Houston, uh, I'll go ahead and send you the picture now from uh, the base block. Okay, we're ready. Well, now that's a good picture. Yeah, and we did see that as you zoomed out, that lost focus. Much better. And we assume Scott is using, of course, using manual focus and not autofocus. And uh, Michael Full, staying with you, as you know, the issue of mere safety has become an important issue in Congress right now. And Representative Sensenbrenner, Republican of Wisconsin, did not want David Wolf to be left behind when uh, the shuttle leaves later this week. How do you answer those concerns, you who've been there through these very difficult four months? Well, I, I have only positive things to say about those concerns. I, and what I mean is I, I appreciate the senator's concern. I think the, uh, the interest in safety, I think the very open discussion that the Senate and con uh, congressional interest has provoked at both NASA and in Russia has been very helpful. I think there has been progress as a result of all of this scrutiny by Congress. However, I always have felt safe here because behind us is a spacecraft called Soyuz. And the Soyuz, in any event, can allow us to leave the station in a real emergency. The problems of um, 
uh, power management, too much condensation, the things that you've seen reported, they are real problems that we have to deal with, but they're not life-threatening. They, they can make your life a little uncomfortable, and if they went on for a long time, it, your life could become miserable. But we generally uh, surpass these things and, uh, and put them to the side. And Michael Fole, give us a sense of some of the experiments or what you've learned um, from the collision, for example, that make these risks especially worth it. Well, no one, no one likes a collision, and uh, I can't say I'll ever choose to do that one again. Um, however, once the whole point in, in, uh, in most big endeavors, and this is a great endeavor between our countries, Russia and America, in uh, doing this international program, you are going to have accidents. And the strength in this program is how you overcome the unexpected problems, not in how you execute all the things that you planned for. And I think the way we're overcoming this is, is really what we should be proud of. And Commander, you've brought a whole new uh, computer or, or the parts to make a new computer for the uh, for Mir. Is that right? That's true, and here it is right here. Mike is going to uh, lift it up and show it. It is a, a new guidance control computer for the Mir, uh, which hopefully will help uh, keep their attitude uh, without losing their attitude. David Wolf, uh, tell me what your goals are for the next month. What key experiments are you going to be working on? Uh, first order of business is to get the laboratory in full working order. We're well along the way. I wish you could see it. It's a wonderful microgravity laboratory. Uh, we're working with three-dimensional tissue cultures uh, the last few days where we are able to grow three-dimensional tissues which behave, uh, will help us learn the principles for tissue engineering and are useful for our cancer research programs and a whole slew of other experiments. Dear friends, we are happy to greet you from on board the Mir Orbital Complex and the docked uh, Atlantis shuttle to uh, soon the people of Earth will celebrate the 40th anniversary of the first artificial Earth spe specialist. Right now we have on board a large crew. We have Commander Jim Weatherby, who is the commander of the Atlantis crew, who brought his craft very beautifully and very well docked with us in the manual mode. I'd also like to say a few words. I greet you with the holiday. I uh, saw Sputnik when I was small. I am therefore very happy to have this possibility, opportunity. This is, these are great days that must excite uh, everyone. Forty years ago, we had a new word, Sputnik. We today call it an artificial Earth satellite, and every person could hear the signals from space, the short radio beeps, but they uh, meant very much for each person on Earth. It opened a new era, and undoubtedly, all people who participated in this project can be proud. And together with them, we are happy that the great epoch of space has begun uh, starting on that day. Uh, thanks to that, that small Sputnik today, we have large inhabited, uh, large volumes inhabited by astronauts and com cosmonauts. Uh, we have s craft such as Atlantis, and today we wish to greet all the people who started this great enterprise, health, happiness, great success. We know that, that the labor of many people who uh, work on something remains unnoticed. But we astronauts and cosmonauts understand this very well, and we 
are today talking to these people. A great thanks to them for their uh, great labor that was the basis of our work and which would not be possible otherwise. Thank you very much. Health to you, happiness to you personally, to your families, and great successes to our common cause, the opening, the exploration of space. Linus Meir, Houston for Wendy. Yes, Wendy, uh, I know you're in the middle of your checks. One other thing that's been brought up is that in the coal start procedure in flight supplement 8-16 of the orbit ops checklist, in step one, you powered off the PGSC and the expansion chassis, and then in step three, you powered them back up. Apparently, there is a documented uh, problem with doing that without waiting for a couple of minutes. On occasion, when uh, a PGSC is powered up immediately after being powered down, uh, it doesn't power back up. And uh, if everything else checks out, we would like to suggest trying it again, but waiting two minutes between powering down and powering back up. Well, there was already a two-minute delay, and it looks like the breakout box has a problem, which I'm still trying to troubleshoot. Copy.